Let's go live. And we are live. Okie doke. All right. Hope you're doing good there, Charles. I don't know if you're still there or not, or if anybody else is. Um, hope you're doing, uh, everyone's doing well. I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if we're going to have time to, um, yeah, I, I, I'll try to stay back and hopefully I don't disappear and reappear. I didn't do, um, didn't upgrade the maps and uh, I didn't, like I said, it's kind of been like, well, I've been off uh, a week off um, from work and I just decided, well, I, I'm not going to say slacked off or whatever, but I didn't do the usual, um, I was like, oh, let's just take it easy kind of thing. And um, so I didn't go through uh my usual routine of uh, doing like the week that was and um, getting all the, uh, all that stuff ready and trying to figure out things about, um, uh, you know, the stuff that I, I would love to find out more about and all that stuff. And then the segment about what uh, uh, certain websites we're going to go to, which we will. And that's why I'm even thinking, I don't even think we're going to have time to uh, watch a Callendale uh, playthrough today. I found so much more material um, early this morning, I didn't even have time to pop it in my sources yet. I'll, I'll put it in later uh, when I look after the uh, the live stream. But when I saw it, I was like, "No, I've got to show this to people. This is just ridiculous." Um, I, it was all just due to the fact that when I went to the um, uh, yet again, uh, uh, like I said before, I, uh, I wanted to try to figure out better ways of trying to, um, you know get out some of the information so that way we can interact and start talking about world war one and you know how it relates to gaming and just just that in general really and um like i said the national uh the world war one um uh how do i get this i keep forgetting this uh, the national world war one museum and memorial um they've got a huge amount of resources for educators and i was looking at it this morning i didn't realize how good it is so yeah, man, am I ever disappearing a lot? Um, maybe I'll turn off the background because it may be um, irritating. Hold on. Uh, I think I go to settings, virtual background, and then I'll just say none. There we go. I just uh, it sucks because I wanted you guys. It's uh, oh, but actually this is going to be a good thing because it's going to come up with um, a talk about um, the Italian. Um, well, Italy in World War One. Hi, Meandering Mike. Great to see you. Um, oh my God, Meandering Mike. Wait until we go to the links. Uh, I almost, I'm not kidding you. I came close to weeping uh, this morning when I saw how much material is available, as well as uh, wait until. You, okay, every time we you see curriculum, my jaw dropped. I went, oh my God, it's it's a course or a mini like a, a series of lessons that you can take and download. I'm like, yeah. then uh, another website, wait, I wait until I show it to you. It's uh, through yet again, they show uh, got, it's called um, something about doc links or something like this. And well, it's, I'm obviously just going to be going to the world war one uh, area, but they have, you can go anywhere you want. And what it is, it's a resource for first uh, for primary sources of information. What? I'm like, oh my god! All you have to do is register. It's part of your national. It's part of the United States National Archives. Like I've mentioned before, your government is just incredible for keeping records. It is just like your. It, it's sh it's amazing. Like, hats off to you guys. But amazing. So like people thousands of years from now should like, you know, be very thankful for you guys. Anyways, let's get on to this stuff. Um, so we'll start off with the trivia bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll just go off. I think last uh, week, which blew me away, uh, just right off into first place because uh, the 10 points and the, and the one point is um, uh, Willie Marins uh, with King George V. Anyways, here's your first. Um, it's. This is not easy. Well, some once some of the uh, some of them are going to are going to be really easy. So we'll see how that goes. Also, you know what I was thinking about um, in, in when I start showing you some of the stuff today. I think what um, 
So whatever, oh, I'll, I'll go through a rundown, but I'll show you the first uh, trivia question. So you get 11 points. As a child, I used a plane of glass and sharpened piece of soap as sketch, sketchbook and pen. So there you go. Yeah, I'll go through a quickie rundown, and then um, I made yet again a gazillion notes. I will say one thing that I'm uh, starting to clue into that I, I had not clued into before. Um, or No, I did before. I used to, uh, when I did this uh, in university, when I had a really hard time uh, understanding concepts and whatnot, I would reread the chapter. Um, so anyways, getting ready for... Um, Getting ready for the Italian front, uh, artsy person, meandering Mike. Yes, yes. Um, and their uh, skills were, well, you're getting one point. Uh, their, so you're up to five now, I think. Uh, your, their skills uh, were put to use um, to do some, okay, uh, no. But uh, but I'll give you one more hint, another hint. Hold on, I gotta go and grab. The, I'll do the cut, uh, cut and paste thing. Maybe this will help you. <sighs> this one I'll give you. A, this one's a good one. Well, I'm not a. I think it's somewhat of a good one. Let's see. Anyways, uh, the, the thing that I was thinking about was um, uh, when I wanted to go through the Italian uh, Italy in World War One again. Um, you know, uh, for a few reasons. One, because Charles Latour brought it up. Math, fun, and games brought up um, the thing about command and control in one of my um, YouTube things uh, comments, and I was trying to figure out. And I remembered that in the Italian front, there was something about um, the way you had to keep certain area uh, armies separate. The Italian armies had to keep them separate along the Asanzo to simulate um, their command con command and control structure, which uh, doesn't. There's your here comes your second uh, hint. Uh, I designed 137 war cemeteries. The largest, oops, which I misspelled, at ETAP uh, contains 107,761 casualties. So there you go. Um, anyways, so I started rereading and uh, rewatching lectures as, uh, as well. And I just clued into me how much material I probably missed and so on and so forth. And I was like, wow, this is something I'm going to have to do again. Also, that I watched uh, or listened to um, a pod, a second podcast of a different interviewer interviewing the same person, um, uh, Wanda Vilcox, and um, very. It was. It, I mean, yeah, what a different take on things. So that that I found really interesting. So here are the things I would like to go over. So try to keep me on track, guys, and also please, you know, chime in. Hopefully, it'll uh, get you guys going here. Um, yeah, I want to look at, uh, we're going to go very quick, um, just uh, because there's just so many, uh, start looking at, uh, World War One related games that are currently in stock. I'm not getting into this. Um, well, they say it's in stock or no, no, what you can buy right now. If I gone, went to their online store and went clink and supposedly it's going to be uh, shipped to me. That's what I want to know. Uh, obviously I'll still do the, uh, we'll still go on with the trivia thing. I want to start talk, uh, on, on the talk of Italy in world war one. Um, also, uh, brief, uh, like I said, with the brief mention of command and control, uh, we're not doing the Calendale play through, I don't think. Uh, so we'll start off with the, um, oh, no, there's going to be a couple of websites. I do want to, uh, one is a game that made the cut on Legion war games. I know it's not a world war one game, but it's kind of related it's the Russo-Japanese War. We'll take a look at that quickly. I'll pop it out. Hold on here. I've got to get to my... Uh, I've got to go to the present and all that crazy nonsense. Um, and i got to make sure I get to the Legion War games when I wanted to show it to you. But it made the cut. I'm really excited by this. Oh, my goodness. By the way, on another side note, uh, guys, you may notice that the qual the video quality is pretty good. And you know what blows me away? is I'm using that 720p camera that I found in the dumpster, yet I'm using the tw the 1080p uh, feed that StreamYard is giving me free for a few days to sucker me in. But yet my feed is far improved. So I'm like, well, why wasn't I getting this improve this beautiful feed anyways with the 720p when I was in your 720p land? So what's going on here? I kind of let that bit 
that bothers me. Anyways, here we go. We're going to share the screen of uh, the Legion War Games thing. And you can see it. And then I just need to view the thing so I can start funking around here. So tell me if, oh yeah, sorry guys, I have to pop in the, change the window to be able to just be full on uh, Legion War Games. There we go. And there we go. And you guys can see this, I hope. Yep. And I can't, oh darn it, I have to move the window, sorry. There we go, so I can scroll properly. But this looks really interesting. Am I not allowed to scroll? Why are you not doing, letting me do this? There we go. Yes, yeah, so I'm hoping to, uh, I made the cut. It took a long time. Uh, what was the cut? Um, hold on here. So it's way past it. So I'm, I'm really darn happy with that one. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm going to get rid of this guy. So we're back to this. And I'll put me back to here. So yeah, that that thing I'm really super duper ultra excited for. And now we'll go to what did I say I want to go? Oh yeah, to some of the uh, World War One games that are currently in stock. Let's see, I've got the little list here. I think we just go to BG. No, we have to go to. Hold on. Where are you? In stock World War One games. Yeah, there's just so much, so bloody many. I was like, there's I can't. Um, not gonna happen. So hold on here. I'm going to uh, pop on another thing. Okay. And hit the return key. And we're there. And now I'm going to share that one. Okay. Hmm. Lawrence of Arabia was an artist too, right? Oh. Uh, uh, Meandering Mike says, hmm, I'm trying to learn, Meandering Mike, about having how, uh, having to do these comments and, and uh, uh, talking as well. So I'm learning. But uh, hmm, Lawrence of Arabia was an artist too, right? I don't think he designed cemeteries, though. I have no idea. But interesting that you mentioned that, uh, Meandering Mike, because I think um, I uh, had said in a previous post uh, for my first year birthday party, I was considering uh, trying to figure out how I could do um, a movie or something like that and um and have it stream but obviously I, I have to have the legal rights so you have to buy the license or something and one of them i was looking at this morning was lawrence of arabia so uh but i was like oh, I, I i think i want to get more towards of a and it's a long movie uh i was also thinking i you know what i would rather just maybe stick to um uh a lecture like one of the Pershing lecture series and the one I would like I was well you know maybe it would be nice to we got till March 25th leave it up to everyone and say what would you know what and I'm, that way I can hopefully I can get it um figured out ahead of uh, like uh, enough time so that way I can contact the World War One uh, Museum and Memorial and say hey am I allowed like how much money is it going to cost for me to stream one of these lectures through my YouTube channel and um you know if it's a hundred bucks or whatever i don't know what it is and uh, and they may say no you can't do that um but i don't want to do that copyright slap that i got once with the and that was only a 10 minute thing but i understand that was the great war channel where i you know i i did that so and that's not that wasn't right so anyways i would like to do that but i would like obviously love to leave it up to you guys to say you know what let's watch this topic there's a few that i have there's a few like there's one um World War One in the Far East. I have you no. Know, I've got a few things I've heard about. That's it. So, anyways, let's take a quickie look. So this is the first one. I'll go to back to present. I may have to reduce my. That's it. I'll just do this. Yeah, I think that's okay. And let me know if it's not looking good on your screen because I may not be able to see what you see. Here, I'll give you another uh, hint before we go off to there. Um, uh, this one here's another one i hope this is uh oh i'll give you this i don't think i uh but i think you're kind of cluing in that this is uh, uh something that this person has done or you know that's why uh, they're world war one related so the next one is a famous architect i designed many of the war memorials and cemeteries so there you go okay here we go uh present share screen this one looks really interesting well if you haven't seen it yet so hold on microsoft 
damage. Uh, yep, this one. Like I said, we're only going to be able to see a few things because uh, um, there's just so many games out there. Uh, this one looks uh, rather interesting. I Let's see, view larger image. I'm allowed to see it. Well, that looks nice. And how did the counters, unfortunately, look bigger than the hexes? But it seems to be a pretty normal thing in, in the universe. Nice price. I don't have a clue about um, so about this one. Hold on, I'm going to. I can keep that window open and just grab the other links for the. So that was the first battle of the Myron by Turning Point Simulations, and this one uh, is a huge whack of. I don't understand it. It's books or something. Other than Frank Lloyd Wright, I don't know architects really. Okay. I'll give you some more hints then, Meandering Mike, and maybe this will uh, jiggle your uh, uh, your um, something in your head. Uh, here's the next one. Let me pop this in. This is by Avalanche Press, and I just found out that um, um, I guess it, uh, you have to – some of these things that are in pre-order or whatever take 300 years uh, – um, to come out. So I don't understand this thing of, like, I don't know how this, okay, there's the box game, but then there are these playbooks. So I guess is this just like the, I order a battle or whatever. I don't really understand, but um, someone obviously would know something, someone like, I was thinking of uh, McMurray actually. Uh, I think I was mentioning that uh, he's been painting some miniatures, I think for an upcoming thing for uh, Dogger Bank. Turning Point and Simulations did that series on a book about 20 most Famous battles, or maybe 24. Hmm. Okay, here's another one, and then we're going to start talking about Italy. Uh, oh, this looks, uh, so this, I don't know. Oh, this one looks interesting. So that, uh, this one's, uh, they say it's in, they say it's in, um, in stock. It's by Multiman Publishing, Rock of the Marne. Hopefully you guys can see that. It says it's uh, in stock. That's a pretty decent price. I don't know anything about it. 22 by 32 inch map. Avalanche Press, be careful. Only buy stuff actually in stock. Yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was you that was mentioning that to me. Uh, meandering Mike in the uh, uh, someone else's live stream earlier in the week on the Thursday night one there with uh, Hex to Hex and whatnot, um, and McMurray and Wardrobe um, does World War II, I think is his name. Um, oh, interesting. I didn't know that. So, uh, yep, so that's it. Let's go off to Italy land. I think that's what uh, we're going to uh, chit-chat a little a bit. Oh, no, I wanted to show you these amazing resources. That just knocked my socks off. Um, so hold on here. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, yeah. So we'll go to this one first. Please let me know if, it, if you can see this properly. So this is the classroom materials from the National World War I Museum and Memorial that made me just almost weep last night. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So every time you see, and we'll pop on some, I, I saw one, uh, I was just like, oh my God, I can't wait to get into this. Um, so anything you, you see, and, and please, anybody out there that's watching right now, if you want me to click on something, you go, hey, Chris, can you click on that quickly? I mean, for goodness sakes, this is what we're here for, not just me. It's a two-way street. I could be, you know, I mean, come on. So my goodness, see something, tell me. And it goes on. I had to stop. I'm not saying I got bored. Uh, today, but I was like, okay, I've got other things to do. I got up to page 14 or something. And I was like, okay, I, I, enough's enough. But they had a whole thing, or was it at the other one, the doc things? Um, I could, I, yes, it was first, uh, I saw a primary sources of uh, photographs of a, uh, an Italian submarine, which I thought was interesting. So yeah, anything you see with curriculum is uh, you can do a little, um, Thing, but I want to show you the one that I saw. It's about the trench warfare. We'll go to that one. And I went, oh, my God. And like I said, you can download these things. Look, Battle of the Song. You got a whole little thing there. Look at all this stuff. This is nuts. 
changing technology, changing tactics. This is the one I thought was just absolutely fascinating. Um, and you can download the PDF. Um, and please let me know if this doesn't look, uh, you can't see it prop, uh, big enough or whatever. We, I'll make it bigger here. Let's see. And my goodness. I'll go, we'll go down to some of the pictures here. I'll scroll, scroll, scroll quickly. But my God, I mean, I've got years upon years. Of, look at this. Are you kidding me? I mean, how much fun am I going to have? This is nuts. Anyone can have fun with this. This is just like, wow. What a way to learn. This is just spectacular stuff. Yeah, I know, Meandry Mike. I'm just absolutely, and this is just, as you said in one of your videos about the, your miniatures, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for me finding in this tip of the tip of the iceberg. This is just one website for God's sakes. Ah, look at this. Wow. Just, just, oh my gosh, on a side note, I've been uh, watching a, in a serialized version. I just have, don't have enough time to sit down and watch it all in one go. It's the first time I've watched the second version. I didn't know there's a there's a 1935 version of uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. I think it's 1935. Um, and I'm watching the one with um, the guy from the Waltons there and Ernest Borgnine. Holy smokes, is he ever a good actor. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I'm watching that in serialized version. It's, uh, I don't know what you guys think about that movie or whatever, but uh, I'm finding it really fascinating. It's really, really good. I just got to the point now where they ran into the corporal uh, the second time at the front now. They just ran into him. And, uh, yeah, it's really good stuff. But look at all this. This is just fascinating, man. Yeah, I mean, and there's another – I just don't know anything about trenches. So this is going to be so neat to find out. Um, oh, my God. It's just – it is, isn't it? It's endless. Just ridiculous. So the other one I wanted to show you was the dock thing. If I can find it. Hold on. No, oh, here we go. This one's just, oh, 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 my God. So like I said, this is just the World War I part of it. But, um, or not, yes, yes, Mandarin Mike. Um, and the neat thing is, I was, I'm, I'm watching it on Tubi. Here, I'll, put, I'll put it on here for just a sec so I can... Uh, uh, you can see me a little tiny bit for a second. Uh, so we can, I'll talk and then we'll go to here. Um, so I'm watching it on Tubi. And first off, I'm blown away that I've now well into over an hour into it. I don't know if it's because I'm watching it serialized. I still haven't um, had an ad. Like I had to remind myself, oh yeah, I'm watching it on Tubi here. Wait a minute. They should be kicking in ads at some point. But the nice thing is, is that uh, because I'm watching it serialized, I pause it you know, do stuff for a few hours, come back and, and watch uh, maybe 20 minutes or whatever. They're um, putting it, uh, rewinding it a little bit. And so uh, at one point I got to watch Ernest Borgnine as Cap or whatever his name is at the food thing where uh, the guy's putting out the food, uh, basically said, waiting for the rest of the company to show up. And the guy said, oh, there's supposed to be a hundred and something for your company. And the guy said, no, there's only, there's only 80 of us left. And, um, Used to call online game characters board. <laughs> oh, cool. And yeah, uh, okay, I got to see the second bit of that scene. And you can see how good of an actor, at least I found, he is. Because he's doing things such as, it's got nothing to do with him. Like, they're t like it's now off, he's part of, he's off scene. It's not like, it's interacting with the other characters. And he's, peek he's peeking over someone's shoulder to see what's actually in the food, in the food slot bucket um, or whatever. I'm like, that's impressive. Anyways, let's go to this. Uh, I'll go back to the full on so you can see. Yeah, here we go. And view the tab so now we can do this. Um, look at this. And Matt, like I said, this is just for World War I. You want to go to World War II? You want to go to Civil War? You want to go to American uh, uh, War of Independence? It's all like this. It's nuts. This is ridiculous. Look at this. Yeah, let's go to the uh, World War One photographs and see if I can find that um, 
Jesus, Murphy, mother of God. I mean, come on, man. So it's not this one that I was looking at. Uh, it was uh, where I found the Italian. Um... Oh, it must have been something like, yeah, oh, sufferings. There we go. Italian submarine. There we go. And let me, and please tell me if it's not coming. Oh, what am I? I wanted you guys to see me full on. Why are you seeing me there? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't want you to see me. I want you to see, be able to see the full, uh, the full screen. Um, and we can, can it, is that bigger? There we go. That's impressive, guys. I was thinking, actually, when I saw this this morning, I was thinking, oh, my God, maybe uh, I'm not sure. I don't know if McMurray would lose his marbles about this, going uh, being able to, you know, get this type of detail for a World War I Italian submarine where you could, I, I mean, I don't know what all these little parts are and all that stuff. If he'd be able to go, oh, that's, didn't realize that this part, uh, you know, is taller than the other part or whatever. Um, yeah, I just... Anyways, yep. So there, like I said, here's all. I will definitely provide these uh, links in because I just found this out. I don't even know what in the world's going on here. There's just so much, so much to uh, find out about. My goodness, impressive. And uh, let's just go on. I just want to. If there's anything else, like I said, you guys want to take a look at? Let me know. Look at that. I hope to God uh, the Zimmerman telegram. That would be interesting to find out a bit more about all that stuff. Wow. Anyways, what else? Uh, all World War One topics. Yeah, the, the posters. I'd love to see that. And there was also some other. Uh, oh, anyways, I'm just saying it's just on and on and on and on and on. It's just incredible. Um, okay, now we'll go to the Italian stuff. But to do that, I'm going to go to. Oh yeah, I got to give you guys another. Uh, uh, hint or whatever. Uh, okay, I'll give you this one. This one's a pretty... And Okay. What are we going to do about... Um, oh, hold on. I'll give her a split. Is that the way? Yeah, here we go. How's that? Uh, what are we going to do about um, getting some better or uh, some easier hints or something? Because this is, these ones are... I can't believe this this game is supposed to be also designed for children. Holy moly, man. Impressive. So there's one. I designed the Cenotaph in London for the Peace Day Parade on the 19th of July, 1919. All righty. So um, what am I going to show now? Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to go to the Italian links. Oh, no, I didn't want to show the Italian link, so I want to go to just the straight up. Yeah, let's go to BGG, and uh, while we're doing that, hopefully I'll try to – it'll be difficult for my brain, but we'll, I'll try um, to talk about what I've learned or what's been going on with the Ita uh, Italy in World War I, and, and then we can take a, also look at the, uh, the, at the games. Well, we'll look at the games in BGG uh, and um, – Children in 1920 might know these. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Mandarin Mike. My God. Okay, hold on here. Let's go to BGG. Um, uh, do I have any more? Let's go straight up to BGG. Okay, and yep, yeah, and we're there. And what I want to do is go to um, advanced search. And I want to pick, I'm just going to pick uh, World War I and uh, the Hex stuff. And then we'll try to look down. You got, you, uh, we'll all look for anything that seems to be related. I, it was only about four pages. Uh, where's the Hex one? Oh, it's on the next thing. I have to do the mechanic. Sorry. Um, I know, I know, but it'll 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 get us down to only four pages of, sh of stuff to look at, and that's the beauty of it. So I'm, let me know if I'm not doing a good job looking at comments, or if you if you guys find this page too big, or you don't want to see my bloody uh, thing there, or you do like seeing it there, you want it like I don't know is this? Well, it doesn't actually do anything. Okay, no, I thought maybe um, putting me there was not making me big enough. 
So uh, I am microwaving a can of chili for breakfast. Cool. <laughs> well, I, I eat um, a, a chili variant often, Meandering Mike, um, for breakfast. It's not funny. I, I slow it uh, goes in the slow cooker for twenty. Oh, uh, sometimes nearly twenty hours. Oh my gosh, because I just put in everything raw now. I'm like, screw this. I'm not. Um, I'm not cooking it anymore. It's like potatoes. Everything just goes in. Anyways, let's go down here and we'll take a look and see some of these things that seem to be uh, got some stuff with the Italian uh, Italy in it. Um, oh, also, that's right. I want to do uh, uh, take a look at the questions about um, and I'm kind of in a, like I was mentioning, I'm kind of glad in a weird way. I don't have the background here for um, this because I think one of the questions I, I posed in my I don't know if you guys noticed one of the questions I posed uh, in the live stream is. Is Der Weltkrieg the right system and scale or whatever um, for the Italian front? And I, I don't mean yes. Uh, what I mean is, is it a yes? It can show it a good simulation and so on and so forth. But is it is it a good compelling uh, game to play? Is it, is there better ways to represent um, aspects of that game? And hopefully, when we take a look at some of the, this stuff. Um, which brings me to the maps, as you know, uh, the crazy cut up maps that uh, at the time, um, Dave Schroeder and the, you know whoever else was helping him out um, said, you know what, we're gonna bring one, which I absolutely just love looking at, um, is uh, the Kappa, actually, if we go back to my profile, it should show me my last, Hold on, we'll go back to BGG and it should show me the last ones I've been viewing. I hope. No? Oh, darn it. I thought it would show me um, my collection. No, profile. I wanted to see my last bits that I was uh, doing. I guess it's not showing, darn it. Um, so I'll have to go back to the advanced search. Because I've I want to oh I'm gonna just type in Caporetto. What am I saying? This one looks absolutely beautiful. Anyways, um, let's say in my you know let's say is this the one Caporetto? It's, I think it's yeah it's 2022. I think nope. So I think I'll have to do it again, right? Um. Let's say you decided to play the grand campaign right now with Der Weltkrieg and based on the way it, it, it's set up or even with the um, Italian front duration or like if you played the duration game and used, uh, you know, the Italian front in it or, or, or any of that stuff, there's a point at which Italy may not side with uh, the Entente. It may go with the central powers. Well, if that's the case and based on what I've been reading, one of the reasons why, uh, from what I've been reading uh, and listening to and all that other stuff, um, the Italy, want, uh, it kind of wanted to, it did certainly thought it was a better idea to go with the Entente than the Central Powers for, uh, in, in the sense that you've only got a 460 mile front to defend, you know, from the Swiss border down to the Adriatic against the Austro-Hungarians and Germans versus your entire freaking coast in the Mediterranean and whatnot against the British and the French and everybody else. So what would you do if you played that duration game in Der Weltkrieg and so on and so forth with that cut up map and you're missing the entire Western part of Italy and so on and so forth, like the Western coast, like what do you do then? If you said, okay, by the way, now uh, Italy is now part of the central powers and we're, I, you know, I think it's this one, Mike. It is, yeah. Yes. Now, you want to see some beautiful maps, and please let me know if you don't, if it doesn't come out nicely. But you want to see, welcome to the Asanzo. Holy smokes. Oh, it's the, uh, that's uh, the other one. But still, let's take a look at that one. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Wow. I mean... I mean, I understand it's a completely different scale than um, than Der Weltkrieg, but 
that's what I'm getting into again. Maybe, um, yeah, if uh, it, it's interesting though as well, my, my Andrew, Mike, I've got to learn. Um, yeah, what I'm, yeah, uh, more stuff to find out about. Um, there's also, I uh, was it Trieste or uh, that area, the somewhere around that area that actually Austro Hungary Hungary said we'll give you if you. I'm not that whole chunk, not of all, I guess, all of Southern, whatever, um, that, uh, well, that, I mean, that the Entente decided, yeah, we'll give you that if you side with us. But I think even Austro-Hungary was, were saying, that, okay, we'll give you a tiny little chunk of our whatever's, um, just incredible. Um, look at that beautiful map. Isn't that just, just a lovely thing? Let's go back to, uh, Italy was hoping to get, um, uh, the magazine for the strategy and tactics are good these days. Yes. Um, Mandarin, Mike, I also noticed that I'm not sure if it was, I can't remember who did a review of one of their games recently from strategy. And um, yes, yes, he is. Um, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting to read the bloody comments for people. So Mandarin, Mike says the magazine for the strategy and tactics are good these days and they get good map artists, but half the games are garbage. Okay, I've noticed though that their components have uh, seemed to have upped a notch. I was watching one of uh, someone's unboxings or unbaggings or whatever, and I went, "Wait a minute, those components are actually better than the D-Day Deluxe counters that you get the boxed whatever." And I was like, "Wow!" So hopefully they will, you know, use that as well for their uh, other games. And Meandering Mike also mentions who is the designer on this one. Joseph Miranda is actually good for this one here. It's uh, it says Andrea Brusati from, and it's Europa Simulaz Simulazioni. And as long as I don't look at it, maybe I get some somewhat half deep a bit. Um, the other questions, what was I looking at uh, that I tried to pose for you guys about um, Italy in World War One? I. I think it was about uh, what would have happened if. Um, you know, if Italy had collapsed um, uh, with Caporetto, if, if Austria, Austria, Hungary had somehow managed to be able to, um, I guess, get across the Piave River and uh, get to Venice um, and whatnot. And there was the other thing I've been finding out about uh, reading up and so on and so forth that I guess at the time when Italy um, entered the war, uh, Italy seemed to have been still, I guess, like freshly baked out of the oven kind of thing, like as a nation. And there was, it, there was a lot of people still not um, feeling like they were Italian as a, as a, uh, as a nation for what I've been getting. And I guess after um, Caporetto and the risk or how close the Austro-Hungarians were getting, I think that supposedly that really rallied them uh, and, made them feel like they were part of a nation or something like that. And meandering Mike mentions Europa Simul Simulazione makes some interesting games. They do not have that Caporetto one yet. It looks absolutely uh there's the other here's the other shot which I just thought wow that is when I went okay that's the Asanzo look at that thing wow that's impressive like I just it, I don't like it. Just looks like something I would I'd would certainly like to have on my wall. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that's a sweetheart of a thing. Um, I'll take a look at my notes and I'll show. I'll pop on some other stuff. I just I'm yet again. I know I'm missing four trillion things. Well, yeah, I got to do another trivia thing. Hold on here. Uh, there we go. Um, did I see that? No, I did that one. Um, Oh, uh, you guys are just not going to get this, are you? I don't know. I, I don't know anybody would get this unless you're like really into it. Um, here's another thing. My original cenotaph structure was temporary wood and plaster. You should see the picture of them. Um, and at least one of the pictures that I saw, he looks very. Um, very confident or very proud, I would say. I guess you could say. We would need to Google. Yeah, I think so. Um, huh. How would I do this? Yeah, you'd have to. And it, it just maybe the first person that can get it. 
can, can Google it, I guess, gets the gets it or something. Oh, oh darn it. I have to go through this again. Oh, you little brats. What else about the uh, the stuff that I found out about World War One? Oh, it was interesting that um, here I'll put it on. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to the and just let me know if you um, like what you would rather see or not see or whatever. I mean, I just you know I feel weird. Yeah, it is a gorgeous map, man. I'm like I'm absolutely just jaw dropping, beautiful. Um, it was interesting to also find out that uh, militarily the Italians were ready to send their colonial troops to fight in Europe, but the uh, politicians were reluctant due to racial uh, problem, you know, yet again, uh, they were reluctant to have um, uh, their colonial troops fight uh, Europeans, even though, as we know, Great Britain didn't have a problem with it, Germany didn't have a problem with it, um, France didn't have a problem with it, but Italy did, and in fact, they had um, and but they were they, so they had a bunch of Libyan troops, but were worried that the Libyan troops were going to cause uh, w potentially could revolt in Libya. In uh, what was Libya at that time? It wasn't. I think it was three states, Tripolitania or something. I don't know the like more stuff. I got to find out about. Um, so they were worried of keeping those troops there. Sent them to Sicily. But then weren't and trained them like trench warfare, the whole nine yards, ready to go. And uh, then the politician said no. And Cadorna supposedly was like freaking out, like just losing his marbles. And uh, so they spent the remainder of the year, uh, the war basically in Sicily. What I would like to know, I don't know if this sounds uh, crazy. That's it. You got it. Boom. Yannery Mike gets it. Uh, Sir Edmund L Luton, Lutons or something. Um, yep, that's him. Um, I really want to try this thing with the glass and sharpened uh, soap and see if you can actually do something with it. That would be interesting. Um, did I say? No. Um, uh, what else? Um, with the Italian thing, I just got completely sidetracked, didn't I? Yeah. Anyways, let's uh, maybe I'll show you some other uh, some other games and maybe my uh, my train of thought will pop back in here. Uh, I'll go into the main thing. Oh, it was about the colonial troops. Yeah, I wonder. I would love to find out if. Um, I'm sorry to say, but I would love to find out if there was a a, a chain. Let's say um, some interesting babies born, <laughs> or an interesting demographic shift in Sicily at around that time. Yeah, troops training in Sicily, meandering Mike and. Um, and like I said, they were uh, and uh, the Italians sent them over there because they were worried that uh, they were going to call they were going to, you know, maybe join um, some of the resistance that was going on. Um, uh, going on in um, in Libya. And so they sent them over to Sicily and then the politicians said, no, we can't. Uh, we're not having them fight against Europeans. Are you nuts? So that didn't happen. And then. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just like mind blowing. What else did I find out that was interesting? Uh, well, there was a ton of things. Also, that uh, the ongoing strife in that area that the Ottomans were still um, uh, putting energy towards, and supposedly for, uh, from what I've been re uh, reading and listening to with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Wanda Vilcox, there, um, she mentions that every two weeks there is uh, a submarine. A German U-boat that used to show up and drop off money and arms and Lord knows what's um, uh, to the rebels that were connected with the Ottomans. And there was even parts of the royal family that were smuggled across uh, the Egyptian border uh, to help them out so that to cause uh, strife. So it's like, wow, just some pretty cool stuff. Um and then yet again, I think one of the other questions I was uh, posed, and these some of those questions were from the lecture series, the Dr. DeMarco, I'll pop them in, this, in the link later. Um, at the very end, he was mentioning things about, um, you know, how important Italy, or maybe Italy does not get enough credit about um, precipitating how um, Germany deciding, okay, let's uh, go for an armistice here at November, you know, if it hadn't happened with Italy, uh, basically giving the final nudge 
uh, over in Austria-Hungary, um, the Battle of Vittorio Veneto or something. Um, I still have to learn, learn, learn all this stuff up. Um, it was neat to see, though, that all the gains that made that was made from Caporetto were evaporated in a, a basically the exact same number of days, four days or something, that the Italians pushed them back. But the Italians, I think the Austro-Hungarians by then were falling apart. I think the Hungarian part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire declared independence and sued for peace independently. Some other nation, I don't know who they were. I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, they separated. So it was like, okay, you know, and then the Italians just kind of walked and then we're starting to get, I guess, going towards Germany and maybe Germany just said, holy smokes, um, we, we better, you know, sue for peace now rather than, uh, you know, try to tough it out later. I don't know. It's just all this stuff to learn. Huh. Anyways, let's see if we can find a, a couple of other cool uh, games before uh, we have to go off into uh, La La Land. Yeah, my um, Rob's popping over later, so that'll be fun. And then what was the other? Oh, yeah, the mechanic. Where am I here? Hex. I went way off into Wonderland, did I? That is that is collapse time when half your empire separately. Yes, and um, yeah. Oh, sorry, Meander. Uh, I'm doing it again. Meander Mike says that is collapse time when half your empire is separately suing for peace. Absolutely. And they just, uh, yeah, just all this stuff to learn about. Um, yet again, as well as um, you know, with the, the Triple Alliance, uh, how that was set up. I mean, I didn't realize there was all these little, um, so how did it work? Um, if, hold on. I think it was, if France attacks Italy, then Germany and Austria and Hungary would go to help them. If Germany, if France attacks Germany, Italy would go to help them, uh, help Germany. If Russia attacked Austria, Hungary, Germ uh, Italy would remain neutral. I think something like that. And then so yeah, there was all these little well. Technically, France didn't attack Germany, you know that type of stuff. So they, they got to yeah stay away from it. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, the Great War Commander. What other? There were some really neat ones. Any ones you guys see, just let me know. I'll uh, clock it on, uh, plop it on. There's only four pages, which was kind of nice to see. But some were like straight up, just said Italy, straight up. Uh, I was like, oh, cool. Um, oh, this one here. Another Europa. Do you have this one, me uh, Meandering Mike? They seem to re be really into this. Fascinating. I don't know what uh, the spring offensive. And then you've got uh, the two, du uh, two dudes up there. 1916 spring offensive. Hmm. Wonder what, uh, let's find out what, um, uh, what uh, battalion level. Hmm. Interesting. Anything else? I, I'm sure there's a thousand things I forgot to mention. So what are you guys seeing? Okay, I just wanted to make sure there. Uh, yeah, it was also neat too. I didn't really, I got to watch Kings and Generals uh, to find out how in the world um, um, Italy ended up the way it is. Like, you know, back in like the 1860s or whatever, and now they were starting to become a nation and all that stuff. And it was it seemed to be very different than what was going on uh, with um, uh, the rest of Europe. Like they, they ended up becoming a bunch of these little city states, very urbanized. And the way um, I guess um, I, I don't know. Like this is a, a realm I'm just just very little tiny bit about, but 
just I guess uh, some uh, some of the empire or emperors or whatever who didn't want to actually directly go down to Italy were you know like um, proxy power or whatever the heck sending it over and then over the over time uh, those cities were able to uh, consolidate power and so on and so forth. This is like, oh, the, just amazing stuff. Um, what else? Oh, and this yet again, I get to find out um, because of the Italian front and whatnot. I get my favorite general is going to be popping up pretty soon, which is. Um, uh, yeah, we're going to stop it off soon, I think. Uh, maybe even a little bit early. Hold on here. I'll, I'll pop, you, uh, pop it on to my full on since I'm not showing any pictures or whatever. Or maybe actually, you know what? I'm going to show my um, overhead shot here. My other thing. Let's see if I can. Uh, I'll stop sharing this one. I'm going to present. And also, you can maybe see how much nicer. Um, it's not letting me. Can I do that? There we go. Okay. And, or do I have to do this? And then I just that. Present. Share screen. A window. Ah, there we go. And there we go. And then I'll put this giant sized. Hide that. And then I'll pop you here. And then we'll put me. Oh, I am dinky. So that looks pretty darn good quality uh, thing. And yet again, I think this is just due to the fact that uh, um, that's a 1080p camera that's showing my overhead shot there. And I think that um, yet again, it's uh, uh, StreamYard trying to sucker me into obviously spending some money. Hi, uh, Charles Latoura says, check my spreadsheet. Eight true World War One, eight true World War One, uh, two or three right after. I don't know what exactly. Garibaldi, okay, Garibaldi, key, uh, meandering my Garibaldi, key figure, hmm, um, yes, uh, also, um, General Diaz, after Cardona gets, uh, the boot, after Caporetto, and the way he changes over things with, um, with the Italian army, uh, quite fascinating stuff, and just also to find out how many, uh generals and, and uh subordinates uh Cadorna fired got rid of during uh world war one it's insane I, like it's in the hundreds it, it's like just amazing they were able to actually even um you know uh, uh undergo a war like my god also i found out that um i don't know if you guys know that uh i guess the italian empire the first empire to be soundly defeated by a colonial power um i guess that was in ethiopia i think the ethiopian war um so that was kind of neat and also i guess they were the first ones to also get soundly beaten by uh and also interesting that they got beat by the austrians in the austro-prussian war lost venice but then got it, got it um, because the Austrians lost <laughs> the overall war. And then part of the treaty was that they got Venice back. And yeah, and I was mentioning last week, Charles Latora. Oh, games not running at optimum speed. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Nice. And Charles Latora, I'm going to say this. You're already, what, four games in. Uh, I think Hex to Hex mentioned it too earlier in the week. You're four games in already completed of your 10. Impressive, man. You get to like uh, relax for a few months later, which is going to be kind of cool, I think. Um, yeah. What else? Yeah, this is going to be neat to find out more uh, more guys about uh, the Italian front and whatnot. And yet again, like I was mentioning, I don't know if um, – Yes, that's it. Thank you. I don't, I'm not going to try to uh, pronounce it meandering. Mike, uh, Italian unification, a.k.a. Uh, there was a whatever, uh, 1848 to 1871. Garibaldi was key figure for that. He died in 1882, I think. Okay, I'm going to look that up. Also that um, I didn't realize that uh, the Kingdom of Sardinia, is that it? That it was a big chunk of France. And that was actually the bigger chunk. I was like, oh, my. So all this part there with Nice and everything that um, supposedly... Uh, Italy was also coveting and that yet again was what I was mentioning yeah there is a tiny tiny strip if you go and want to go look up later uh, on the Dervelkrieg maps um, um, uh, 
that Nice and whatnot is connected there, but it's just a tiny strip. And like I said, if you wanted to, I guess, play the proper game out, um, you're missing a whole chunk of Italy there. And if, you know, if Italy does decide to side with the central powers and you're playing that out with your buddies or, or yourself, what are you supposed to do then? Um, hmm. So I guess you'd have to add Libet or something like that and, you know, go from there. Um, excuse me. Uh, Meandering Mike says Napoleon and or his marshals took over parts of Italy, including Naples and Sicily. Yes, um, Meandering Mike, uh, it's uh, when I, uh, the very first, uh, I think you may have it. You, I'm sure you do. I'm pretty darn sure uh, Charles Latora has it. Um, field uh, field com uh, commander Napoleon. The first one is uh, going into Italy, uh, the scenario there. And um yeah, that's just some fascinating stuff. Uh, God, that's a tough game. I've uh, one of my favorite games. Actually, that was my very first big purchase years and years and years ago. I can remember going, "Oh my God, I'm spending a hundred and something dollars <laughs> to get this game shipped over to my house." And uh, but uh, well worth every penny. That thing is just a beautiful beast of a game. Fantastic. Not even close to ever completing that thing. I can tell you that much. Um, so yet again, like I was saying, I don't know if Dervelkrieg, if you're like really into the Italian front and want to play those games, I don't know if that scale and is maybe a compelling, for me, I don't know if it really is. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I'll try it out. I just don't, uh, I guess, it, I think maybe perhaps, I think I would get more of a fun or an enjoyable experience, maybe playing some of those other games, like they were saying at the battalion level, like where I would get a bit more of a, more of an interest of that. I don't, you know, if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, yeah. Charles Latour says number three, uh, done, uh, three done. Number four and five are on my two tables. Yes. Need to finish rules for Tanga 1914, just kind of not well today. And Charles Latour, from what I've been hearing, um, and reading is that uh, the Tanga game is not a, you know, an easy, uh, like you have to pay attention from what I've been uh, reading and, uh, and watching on YouTube stuff. It, it's not an easy game to, di to, to digest. I don't know if it's uh, the, some of the concepts, the, the way the rules are written combination, who knows? I don't know, but uh, I'm interested to get a, a see more of it. So it'll be nice to see it on your, on your table. It was one of those games I was, thinking about getting because i'm like oh you gotta get everything world war one um but it was one i stopped at because from what i was looking at and reading and everything people were going mm, this is a toughie so i was like okay you know what you've got enough on your plate as it is um like calm down calm down so uh oh my gosh and here's another thing i'm talking uh, we we're talking about with the italian front and yet again when i was wondering about oh shoot what am i going to do now if I'm like, I think I've mentioned to you, I want to start incorporating my mini game into the grand campaign and just sliding it right into that. Uh, Meandering Mike mentions there won't, won't be much maneuver on Italian front and Velt Creek. Italian scale sounds more fun. Exactly, man. Meandering Mike, that's what I'm thinking about um, uh, for myself. Uh, um, uh, like I've mentioned, I will play. I'm certainly going to do a proper by the book playthrough of uh the caporetto um uh scenario for develop creek and i'll have it on youtube and i'm going to do it the right way but i think personally for me and I, i'm not going to let it bleed into i'm not going to not going to be that way it's not like i'm not going to not have fun doing it of course i'm going to have fun doing it but i'm saying if i was going to choose it's certainly not a scenario that i, I would be running to get um i personally think if uh for now, and I've certainly got a very limited experience. Um, personally, from now, I think um, 1914, Eastern Front, all of it. I'm talking Serbia, the whole nine yards. Like connect them, connect all the dots, and even pop in the Western Front. You've got a freaking amazing game there. Holy smokes! And I think you've got lots of things, lots of uh, compelling narrative going on. Um, yeah, that's where I think it really sings. Uh, I, like I said, I don't know about all the other stuff and later on when we start getting into whatever, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of people going, um, 
well, that's the way World War I is. Like, stop me. I, I understand that. And yes, I'm the same way too. And I've got to realize, okay, there's not going to be like stuff zipping around all over the place. But it, it also gets to the point, okay, that's right. Therefore, what do I want to look for to, you know, have a compelling whatever? Um, okay, Meandering Mike, you uh, mentions uh, Europa Simula, Simulazione. Caparoto is not published yet on pre-order. There's also another one um, I'll hopefully sh provide the link to you guys for is, um, oh, we're at, uh, when I, hopefully this was a half decent stream. Uh, um, we'll see. I, I felt weird doing uh, like a whole hour of blabbing, but uh, we'll see, you know, see how it goes. Um, I think it's uh, in Romania. Uh, and it looked, it's kind of looks like it at the battalion level as well. They've been doing a heck of a lot of play testing of it. I've been watching it on BGG. Uh, they, they keep posting it, images of it. Um, it's being published in Europe, I think Italy, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. If, I don't think it's from uh, Europa Simulazione. I don't think so, because I think they were actually looking for a publisher. Um, it looks beautiful. I hope to God. And they, Based on the images, like just the people play testing and everything, I, I mean, who knows? They just look genuine and they look like they are making a product that is going to be good. In other words, they seem to be serious, as in they're not just, you know, half assed play testing or whatever, half baked. It looks like they're really doing a lot of research behind it. So I was like, Ooh, this looks like a game I would certainly like to put some money uh, towards um, for sure. Uh, what else can I say, guys? I'll pop me on supersonic size just temporarily and then um, say goodbye to you for now, I guess. Uh, like I said, um, Rob's popping over here and I've got to get things ready. My cat uh, is under uh, under his little tent blanket there and I better remind, uh, get him ready because he's going to lose his marbles. So he's not, he is a true scaredy cat. It is nuts. Um, Anyways, I'm also trying to start thinking about things to do for the uh, the first year birthday party, which is March 28 days from now. And I think I just could take we'll take it nice and easy. I hope um, so. Anything you guys want to chit chat about? Um, I'm, um, I asked Zoe that perhaps um, Manny makes us take care of everyone. You're darn right, man. Uh, especially now, uh, um, uh, Charles Latoro is mentioning. Well, not only that, he's ill, but he was mentioning that. Uh, Wicked flood, uh, flood warning going on in San Diego, and his granddaughter's got a th three year birthday party today. And that, uh, they had to bring all the birthday stuff inside. So, hopefully, that goes well. Jeepers jumping. Um, I'm sure, he's going to probably want uh, to rest a little bit, but there's going to be a lot, heck of a lot of energy going on, uh, zipping around. Um, oh, maybe a lot of your, a lot of the icing will keep you awake and, uh, and, and whatnot if you're allowed to eat it. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys will have a great Saturday. Uh, please think about stuff for to do on the first year birthday party. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I would like to do some kind of like um, just even have the camera over and do some playthrough. I'm going to do a whole tour around the house. I'd like to clean up the basement, obviously, so I could show you my uh, retro video um, computer uh, collection, which is extensive. Um, yeah, I'm sure some of you guys would be like, oh, my God, that's uh, whatever. Like I even have one of the... Uh, very first laptops, which uses double uh, A batteries. So there you go. It's a TRS, uh, a Texas Radio Shack. Uh, it's a sweetheart. Um, I have, well, it still runs. Um, it's, uh, I think, I'm not positive, but I think it was the last official piece of basic coding that uh what's his diddle there uh from microsoft what's his name there uh bill yates or whatever the hell his name is i think that was the last official piece of coding he he wrote i think I, I may be wrong about that anyways that's uh hope you guys have a great saturday i'll let you go so i better like i said i better get, get move on before rob knocks on the door and i uh um it was neat i'll i'll end i'll end it this way um i love having banter with um rob so uh he uh, po uh, sent me a text message yesterday uh, wondering if we were going to do game day today. And I said, uh, I just wrote back saying, because uh, he's, uh, uh, he's the South uh, for the Civil War. And uh, I just said, uh, get your banjo ready, uh, you know, and away we go. So uh, it's just nice to have that type of banter with, uh, you know, your game buddy. So, yeah, hope you all have a great time and I'll uh, see you later, guys. Thanks a lot for showing up.
Bye.